Uh, thank you all for coming. Uh, so the work I'm going to present is called Generic Attacks on Secure Outsourced Databases. So first, we will start with the setting. So what is an outsourced database system? Uh, imagine that we have a bank that keeps uh, records of its clients. Now, in order for uh, efficiently query the records and re retrieve the, the client records, the bank is uses, uh, uses an index uh, which looks like this table uh, of attributes. And let's say that we want to query and get all the records with the clients named Gina. Then all we have to do is go to the index uh, at the name attribute, find the name Gina, and then follow uh, the pointer to the records that we need and retrieve them. This query is called the point query because we, we, we check the equality and we retrieve the records that have exactly this value. Another query, which is called a range query, may ask for uh, the clients whose age is between 32 and 52 years old. In this case, we have to find all the, the values between 32 and 52 at the age attribute and follow all the pointers to, in order to retrieve the records. Uh, some other examples of queries are uh, we may want to retrieve all the clients that are male or all the clients that are male and they are single. Now, uh, as data are accumulated, maybe the bank doesn't want to maintain this database and query it. So in this case, we may want to upload all the data to the cloud, and, but there are some concerns because the, the customer's data, the client data of the bank, uh, are sensitive information, and the bank doesn't want third parties to know about it. So uh, it, it, it cannot trust uh, the data to the cloud. And one solution to this is to use the cryptography in order to encrypt the records before uploading, uploading them to uh, the server. So the question is, is this efficient? So if we encrypt everything, all the records and the index and upload it, uh, are, can we efficiently retrieve the records and query the data that we have? So there are a lot of uh, solutions, a lot of tools that we can use in order to encrypt uh, the, the data and upload them to the cloud. However, mostly uh, these solutions are not efficient, like uh, ORAM or PIR. Uh, that's why uh, literature work it uh, tries to find a, a, a nice balance between security and practicality and efficiency. And towards this, uh, they use usually relaxed notions of encryption, like deterministic encryption or order preserving encryption, uh, which allow efficient indexing and uh, thus efficient querying. Uh, however, they leak some information. Uh, they usually argue that uh, they offer reasonable security. And example of, of these systems is CryptDB, CypherBase, TrustedDB, BlindSeer, etc. However, and this leaked information is not uh, uh, that innocent because we have seen some attacks last year uh, here at CCS. And uh, that's what uh, makes us wonder uh, what is the issue here, why we have this type of, of attacks. In order to understand that, we have uh, realized that the security or, and privacy of these uh, systems is not understood because they are uh, complicated and all the previous attacks and analysis on their security is specific to its different system. So what we offer in this work is a generic approach uh, that allows us to explore the uh, privacy efficiency trade-off uh, uh, using an implementation independent exploration. Uh, by doing so, we, we can uh, also argue about the privacy and efficiency of all the current systems and the future ones, because we do not make any assumptions about the cryptographic tools they are using. So we identified two basic leakage channels that all, all uh, the current systems have. The first one is the access pattern. Leakers. The access pattern leakers allows us to, to see when we query an encrypted database, we, uh, allows us to, to see the, the records, the number of records that we retrieve, and if we retrieve the same record for a different query. The communication volume leakers, on the other hand, 
only reveals the number of records that are re returned after its query. Now, how can we argue about the, the security and the, the privacy of these systems? Uh, our main analysis tool is reconstruction attacks. Uh, because it is shown that uh, it allows us to, to understand the limitations of the privacy utility trade-off. So what we consider as reconstruction attack, we, we do not uh, assume that it's possible to break the encryption of the records and see their content, uh, but what uh, we want is uh, to, to, to say that an attack is uh, effective is to reconstruct the distribution of the records uh, on the indexed domain. So a system, uh, a, a secure outsourced uh, da database system, we want not to allow the reconstruction of the indexed attribute. And uh, unfortunately, our attack showed that uh, this is possible in all current systems. And uh, the setting for our attacks uh, it is, is very uh, general because we assumed a passive adversary who doesn't know what are the, the queries that are issued and he, he's oblivious of uh, uh, the answer as well. Uh, we assumed range queries which are uniform distributed and we also saw actual implementations that demonstrate the effectiveness of our attacks. <clears throat> so the first attack that we present is uh, it utilizes the access pattern leakage. Uh, there, there is a work that uh, exploits this type of leakage, previous work. Uh, the first one uh, assumed uh, some knowledge of the data distribution, it was implementation specific, and managed to uh, reconstruct the index attribute up to a certain percentage, not fully reconstruct. The second attack uh, paper uh, May, is more general, makes no assumptions about the query distribution or the, the crypto system, the underlying crypto system, but it only can recover the order of the records in the domain and not the actual positions. Uh, in our work, we saw that uh, we can efficiently reconstruct all the, uh, all the index domain by assuming uniform uh, range queries. And in order to recover the order, we just need t squared log t uh, queries, where t is the domain size. And in order to fully re reconstruct the index attribute, we needed uh, t to the power of four queries, which we also saw that it's the worst case lower bound. So after observing this, someone may argue, OK, then we should not use relaxed notions of, uh, uh, of uh, crypto we should use uh, uh, ORAM or PIR, that they hide the access pattern. If we do that, then we are fine. We're going to be safe. Uh, however, uh, if we want to support the system to be efficient and support the range queries, we'll still have to leak the communication volume. So an adversary can tell how many records we retrieve, but nothing else. Uh, this is achieved by many crypto-based solutions, and it's disconsidered that this leak is, is harmless. But is it really? Uh, let's uh, see the setting and uh, what is the knowledge that the, the attacker they, uh, can receive by the communication volume leakage. So he can see that the query is issued. He doesn't know what is the, this query or if the same query is issued twice. And then he sees some encrypted records be re returned. In this case, he can tell that there are two records, but nothing else. He cannot tell if the same record is returned uh, for a different query. So, and then another query is issued and information is, uh, go, go, goes back to the client and the attacker sees that one record is returned. So, this is the only information he has along that these queries are range queries drawn from the uniform distribution. So, let's see by, uh, by utilizing this information how a reconstruction attack is possible. So, first we have to consider uh, that uh, the index domain looks like this, where we have, uh, let's say, the account balance of the bank clients, $10,000, $20,000, etc. And if uh, we have a, a record, that, uh, which means a client that has an account balance of 20000 we have a box at this position. So this is the information, the distribution of the records in the indexed uh, domain, and this is the information which the adversary doesn't know and tries to reconstruct. Now, uh, 
a range query is defined by two values which uh, uh, define the endpoints of the interval that it covers. So we can have t choose to plus t queries where t is the domain size, different range queries. So a range query is give me all the clients between 10,000 and 30,000, another query is all the client records between 10,000 and 40,000. So all the different ones uh, are t choose to plus t. Now, after observing enough queries, an adversary can uh, re retrieve this information which is depicted in this table. He tries to find how many different or unique range queries return a specific uh, number of records. So uh, first, he tries to, to recover how many unique queries uh, return four records. It's this query and this query. So he can infer that there are only two. Then he tries to find how many queries uh, return three records. So it's this query, this query, this one, and this one. So in total four. Uh, and we, we continue and he can find how many queries uh, return two, one, and no records at all. So uh, this table is the only information the adversary has. And this, uh, the, and, and the distribution of the records in the index domain is the information we want to reconstruct. What we do is that, first of all, we assume that we have one record before the start of the domain and one record after the end of the domain. And instead of trying to, to find the exact position of each record, we will try to find the distance between two consecutive records. So we, we, we define as R these distances between the records. And the question is, how can, from this table, retrieve these Rs? If we retrieve these Rs, then we have reconstructed the index attribute. So we, first of all, we have to connect uh, the information that we have, the number of uh, queries that return a specific number of records to these R values. And we found the connection, actually. And we, can, we, we saw that if we multiply R0 with R4, essentially, we can get uh, the number of uh, queries that return uh, four records. And this is the, uh, because R0 in this case is two, because the distance between these two records is two, and R4 is one. And if we multiply two with one, we get two, which is the queries that we saw before. Similarly, we saw that if we multiply R0 with R3, and we add the multiplication of R1 and R4, we get F3. So in this case, R1 is, uh, R0 is 2, R3 is 1, so we get 2. Uh, R1 is 2, R4 is 1, we get another 2. 2 and 2 gives us 4. And we saw that this is the case uh, for all uh, the, the queries that return a certain uh, number of records. And what we would expect next is to have R0 squared plus R1 squared, etc which is not exactly the case for the number of queries that return no records, but we can fix it. So we, we define as F0 two times the C0 value plus T plus one, and then we get these uh, equations. So we managed to connect the information the adversary has, this, the F values, with the Rs, which is the information we want to, to reconstruct, the values that we want to get, but uh, it, it, it is really hard uh, to solve this uh, system of uh, equation. So, and it took us a really long time in order to find a way to reconstruct it. So we did something which seems completely random. Uh, we defined uh, two uh, polynomials. So we assume that these Rs are coefficients of polynomials of degree uh, equal to the number of records in the data set. So the first polynomial is uh, R0 plus R1x plus R2x squared, etc. And the second one is the, uh, is the, uh, the one that has reversed uh, coefficients, the, the re reciprocal of the first one. So, and we saw that if we multiply these two polynomials, we get another polynomial, the capital Fx, which has co uh, coefficients the values, the F values that we have. So 
essentially, if we manage to find the factors of the uh, capital Fx polynomial, we can find the Rx polynomials, the coefficients, and essentially we can reconstruct the records on, uh, on the domain. And actually, this can be, do uh, be done in polynomial time using the triple L algorithm. And if the factors of uh, the capital Fx uh, polynomial are irreducible, and uh, we, we get two irreducible uh, polynomials, then we are done. We have reconstructed uniquely uh, the indexed attribute. So the question is, is this reconstruction always unique? Uh, unfortunately, no. Because sometimes we may have a data set and an index attribute uh, which uh, results in more than uh, two uh, irreducible factors. In this case, it's, it, it seems that we, we can have more than one uh, solution. Uh, so it's an open question, uh, actually. We haven't uh, managed to answer this. Uh, given the number of records and, and domain size, out of all the possible data sets we can have, how many can have a unique factorization. So we, 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 we cannot answer this, but in our experiments with uh, 1,500 data sets and uh, uh, different index attributes, we always got a unique factorization and a unique reconstruction. So it seems that uh, there are not a lot of data sets that do not have a unique uh, factorization. So what we saw is that if uh, an outsourced database system leaks the number of records, the exact number of records uh, when uh, qu queried, then this, uh, we, we can have efficient attacks which completely re reconstruct uh, uh, the index attribute and uh, we only need t, t to the power of four queries in order to, to have this attack. And this attack applies no matter what uh, crypto is used in the encrypted database. It's independent. Even if we use ORAM or a fully homomorphic encryption, we still can reconstruct the index attribute because information we use is only the number of records returned when queried. So the question is, uh, and you may argue, is the attack realistic? Well. We say that uh, we, we have a very weak adversary which has no prior, uh, prior knowledge uh, about the data or the, uh, uh, and he cannot see the, query, uh, the, the queries uh, or the query answers. Uh, however, we, we had to make the assumption of uniform queries and, and we need t to the power of four queries. Uh, however, even for some data sets, this attack may not apply or may be uh, too slow. Uh, it, it, uh, uh, it surely demonstrates an overlooked weakness that needs to be further investigated when we want to build uh, new uh, crypto systems, uh, encrypted database systems. So for our experiments now, uh, we used the CryptDB uh, system because uh, the code is available. And uh, so we had the, the client, the, the users, uh, upload their data through the CryptDB proxy to a MySQL server, and uh, when a, 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 and the, the users were were uh, drawing queries uniformly, uh, range queries, which uh, the CryptDB proxy was encrypted them, and uh, the server was returning the encrypted answers. The adversary uh, lied in the server side, and he only observed uh, the the records re returned, and actually only the number of records returned. Uh, the adversary didn't care about the information. And uh, in order to retrieve enough queries to r and, and run our attacks, uh, for uh, an attribute, for, for an index of size 27, it took 15 hours. And this is the data set that we used. So we used the two data files, uh, each one with a, uh, with, with a large number of hospitals, and we used two uh, index attributes, the age and the length of stay. Uh, about the patients in, in these hospitals. And uh, so our attacks always uniquely reconstructed the index attribute. And uh, after retrieving enough queries, the time in order to run uh, our attacks was uh, really fast, uh, in, uh, milliseconds and if, or, or if a few seconds. So to summarize, uh, 
In this work, we first uh, uh, showed a generic model of outsourced uh, da database systems that captures all the current uh, and the future systems. We designed access pattern attacks that uh, uh, fully reconstruct the indexed attribute. And we designed the first attack that utilizes only the communication volume leakage, and uh, it applies even with systems that, that use strong cryptographic tools. And we also so, uh, run uh, experiments on a real system with real data sets. So as a future work, or our current work, uh, the next steps is that we want to design systems that uh, go beyond these two leakage channels. So first, we want to hide the access pattern, which can be done by using ORAM or PIR. And we want to perturb the communication volume in order to uh, to avoid having the communication volume attack. This can be done by using differential privacy, uh, which, uh, and by doing so, allows us to have provable trade-offs between privacy and efficiency of the future systems. Thank you very much. Okay, very nice talk. Any questions? Please say your name and affiliation first. Thank you. Hi, uh, Marie Sarah Lacharité, Royal Holloway. Have you looked at um, queries with distributions other than the uniform distribution? Uh, no, we haven't, but uh, we can. Uh, so we believe that, it, that the distribution has to be close to uniform because we need uh, to, to make sure that we can retrieve every possible. Uh, range query. So we need something that's close to uniform. Okay, thank you. Yeah, please come to the microphone. Raphael Bost from uh, Université de Rennes. Uh, just a quick question. How might padding affect this attack? Uh, like if you start to, to insert some fake uh, documents, how, how does it work? So uh, as long as the number of re return records is proportional to the actual ones, these attacks can work. So if, if uh, somebody uses padding and its record is increased, but uh, we know that uh, the, the size of its record, then we can tell the actual number of records re return. We need some kind of randomness. That's why the idea is to use uh, differential privacy in order to, uh, to, to make sure that, uh, that it's kind of random uh, how you, you pad uh, its answer. If you do it deterministically, then uh, you can still have an attack. Thank you. Hi, Paul Grubbs, uh, nice talk. Um, you're, it, like, you're going for like exact recovery. Is, yeah. is there like a, like, it, could you do like fuzzy, like if you only cared about getting like the top half of the bits or something, could you do something more efficient? So, um, yeah, th this is something that we want to look at. Like, uh, if we have less queries or uh, the, the range of the queries are, uh, are bounded, maybe we can have uh, uh, a reconstruction which is not uh, full, but it's uh, partial. So, yeah, maybe we, uh, we can do something like that. We haven't explored it yet. But, uh, yeah, w with fewer queries, maybe we can have a partial reconstruction or a, a reconstruction which, which is uh, correct with a certain probability or... You could combine with inference to try to get the, to try to do the uh, recovery of the rest of the bits if you get some of them. If you... yeah. All right, any more questions? Okay, let's have the speaker again.